Hi everybody, it's Maureen Awake from Dutch Bacon as always, and as usual. Yeah, as you can tell, this is the follow-up video on uh, Barbatos and refining my clairvoyance with him. So yeah, I'm just going to jump right in and maybe try making the video as short as possible. Then again, I've said that several times and it doesn't work out, so whatever. Anyways, oh boy, we're not done yet with the thing with Barbatos. For people that thought that it was done, I said, oh, okay, so Maureen was done, you know. The whole thing with Barbatos is... is the whole thing with Barbatos is, um, is, is over and done with, yes, just like he explained in the other video, etc. Again, apologies if you, if you can't see me in full. Maybe I'll lean back a little. I'm not going to readjust the camera. I don't feel like it. Now, I, um, so yeah, let me just say immediately, oh boy, I'm not done, point one, with Barbatos. The, the, the thing with the tattoo, we're not done, not by a long shot, so to speak. Well, I'm almost literally done, but uh, yeah, it, there still has a there's still a good deal of in the way of follow up. Point two, Barbados his his stuff right his his power has a kick like a mule to it. So let me explain to you guys what happened over the past. I can't remember when I recorded the last video. It was like what a week and a half ago, something like that, a week ago. Well, after I put on Barbados's tattoo, right? I have never had any issues with any of my tattoos. But Barbatos' tattoo, it literally itched so mercilessly. It was almost like I had, I had itching powder on that tattoo. And the tattoo was so red, I mean the area around the tattoo, including the tattoo, was so red. The skin was so heavily afflicted and affected. I mean it still is, but it's clearing up slowly but surely, obviously, or gradually. So yeah, good, good stuff. Um... I never with any of my tattoos had in my entire life and or career had any issues but with Barbatos, oh boy. So I thought after the stuff that I mentioned in the first video that okay, that's, this is what's going to be it. You know, like I said, when I check stuff out as in should I do this, should I do that, I'm not going to literally go over every little microscopic detail. It's impractical, plain and simple. So yeah, um, what happened, like I said, other than the bitching itching of, of Barbatos' tattoo, is um, that I literally honestly became so afflicted that it was like I was sick without actually being sick. So the tattoo and Barbatos' energy, it essentially made it, made it so that it was almost like I had a heavy fever, like a really heavy fever. You know, people ask me, I said, hey, what's up with you? You look tired, you know, you look, you, you look, you look horrible, you look pale, like pale death, like you're going to die. I... I think up to three days ago, I only ate two bananas for the entire day because I felt that horrible. I um, I drank two Red Bulls and I puked them because Red Bull has acidic properties that you should not drink when you're, so to speak, ill. But again, I wasn't ill. I had all the symptoms of an illness, like a heavy fever, like I had malaria or something, or dengue. Um, and yet, or any kind of outdoorsy disease, and yet... I wasn't sick. It was all purely, you know, my astral body reacting to Barbatos' power and uh, the tattoo. And I had to fuck, I had to itch that tattoo so relentlessly. It just itched like a bitch. I mean, seriously, you would swear that that tattoo, hypothetically speaking, had some kind of STD. I'm just joking. But in a matter of speaking, okay. Uh, <laughs> Barbatos is also joking. Yeah. Now, anyways. Um, that happened and I could barely get up honestly I literally could barely get up when I got up I was literally like this uh, if I took a cap I was literally knocked out I'm like yep can barely move I barely move I was like Ugh. you know and I never get sick so you can imagine um, the guy uh, Mashik I, I video chat with him like almost every day <laughs> he he can attest to that. Not that he needs to, but he can tell himself how horrible I looked and whatnot. And now I'm back to my normal self, essentially. Um, almost. You know, I'm not out of the woods yet, but I'm almost done. And uh, virtually done. Um, maybe still a little warm. But for the rest, I'm fine. Now, that cleared up, I think, yesterday. Yeah, around yesterday. I was able to, I look normal again and I could walk again and whatnot. Uh, and I, I could eat food again. I didn't want to eat solids when my appetite came back, so I ate soup. Uh, like chicken soup and stuff like that. Um, 
I just lied like a like a freaking corpse on my bed all day. I only got up when it was absolutely necessary, for example, to get to work, the host ritual, to do this, to do that. Um, now, after that, okay, now, I had uh, serious messages through dreams. Um, the first message I'm aware of, I don't need to share that with you guys because that's not really relevant. Now, uh, last night, yeah, I remember, no, 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 up three days ago, when I woke up, I saw in my mind's eye, by my mind's eye, I mean, like in the background, but you know, it's, it's not official like Astro. It, it's like more in the background, like some kind of imprint. I saw a serpent hovering in the air, like a, almost like a rattlesnake or some sort, like a, just a general pit viper just circling in the air and looking at me and, you know, going like this, sticking its tongue out and stuff like that. And as the day passed by, you know, that serpent started becoming, it started hissing and becoming more aggressive. And the second I woke up, I asked my astro body, I said, what, what's that thing? Let me guess, it has to do with Barbatos' statue. He was like, yeah, it's uh, essentially, you know, his power that is fusing with the core of your being. So yeah, as it turns out, things didn't end at the tattoo. Now, Barbatos' power needed to fuse completely with my astral body down to the core. Think of the core, the center of the earth, literally. <laughs> I'm the earth in this metaphor. Barbatos had to literally fuse with that and become one with my power. So Barbatos' energy, okay, by putting on the tattoo. And you can imagine me being as strong as I am, my power level perfected, unlimited. It's just the perfected infinity. Oh boy! That's why the, the reaction was so heavy. Now, as days passed by, I think a day or two passed by, the serpent became more aggressive and whatnot. And um, yesterday, um, when I woke up this morning, so I had the dream last night, I had like a couple of dreams. I had one dream where I was in an ancient Native American temple, like an Inca or Mayan or Aztec temple. And, you know, it's a message. Everything is super lifelike. It was like a brothel at the same time, like a brothel version of an, an, old, an, old, an, old, an old ancient Incan or Mayan or Aztec temple, an old Native American temple in any case. Um, and people in there, some people knew me as in they watched my videos, they especially like my Native American stuff, the, 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 the Native American spirits I covered like Huitzilopochtli, Tezcatlipoca, um, Quetzalcoatl and uh, Mitklan Tecutli. Yeah, and um, and oh boy, I um, had that dream and then I had another, th and yeah, the entire temple collapsed with me in it, but I was unscathed because I managed to, like, while I was falling, I managed to maneuver in such a way that none of the huge boulders hit me. You know what kind of huge boulders these temples are made out of? You can squash a man like it's nothing. And um, I had another dream about just being in a generic brothel and a guy I knew from high school, a guy from the Netherlands, um, I was having sex with some disgusting hooker and he um, he came in and started having sex with her and I started recording it and after that I was in another brothel with another guy, no ancient, ancient Native American brothel thing this time, just a regular brothel, a crappy looking brothel that you'll find like maybe in the Philippines or something, no offense to Filipinos. Um, and yeah, one of the guys simply said, hey, this is just a, um, you know, they're hookers. You know, you treat them the way they deserve to be treated. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, I'm not going to have sympathy for them. I'm simply saying. And I remember in the dream, I was disgusted because the hooker that I was having sex with, her vagina, her genitalia looked atrocious. Something you can expect, I think, from hookers. In any case, I, 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 I pulled out the second the other guy came in and, I was like, knock yourself out, I don't care. Yes. Now, that's simply a short sideline, okay? Uh, that stands for the fact that um, I, the, the, uh, when I woke up, I asked what the hooker thing was all about. And it was like, yeah, brothels and, and overall prostitutes are, are a no for you, Master Moreno. You know, they're, they're, they will taint your, your, your divinity even more so. It's not a big deal or anything like that, but, you know, you're hypersensitive to a lot of stuff in a good way. You're like super clairvoyant now and super receptive by your own standards. So, yeah, it's it's just for good measure's sake, just overall good mental hygiene, if you will, spiritual or occult hygiene, astral hygiene to not 
go to any kind of brothels or anything like that. Not that I do. I don't. Ew. I disgust. I'm disgusted by that. You know, I just, no, I like, you know, normal classy women, you know, not prostitutes and escorts. Ew. But yeah, simply a, a warning sign, similar to not using alcohol and drugs. Uh, it's, just a it's just a reminder. Not that I needed one, but it's just a reminder to, to not forget about it. Now, the former, like I said, the former dream of the ancient, American, uh, ancient Native American temple simply stood for um, thingy. It stood for the end of my regular clairvoyance and the beginning of a new clairvoyance, essentially a renewal. The death of the, my old level clairvoyance and the beginning of new level clairvoyance, like Morino Clairvoyance 2.0. Just, oh boy. So yeah, Barbatus' stuff has a kick like a mule to it. Oh boy. So you can imagine, if I say, if, if something like this has a toll on me, or it has such an effect on me, I was just like thinking to myself the other day, and I said to myself, so if someone else even remotely tried this, they would be dead. It would literally put them either in a coma, or they would outright kill them. Literally. And, you know, at my, you can't come even, you can't even spiritually come close to me or near me. It's just, you'll short circuit immediately. That's how powerful this whole transformation was. And, um, check the link in the description below for any interesting things like a picture of what the tattoo looks like and the reddish skin and stuff like that. Believe me, I already went over a rational explanation. I know that that's not it. That, for example, maybe the tattoo is infected or something like that, or they used dirty needles. No, that's not it. I am sure. As sure as sure can be. I have never in my entire life had any issues with my tattoos and I go to the same tattoo parlor. I know how they work. So I know for a fact that this is not, uh, this is purely spiritual. Okay. I have never uh, had such an intense experience with my, not even my Martian tattoos. With my Martian tattoos, it was just straightforward, you know, blood, fire, war, <laughs> so to speak. Immediately something heavy handed happens and that's it. Boom. Okay. But with Barbados, oh boy, I've never met something so intense. I've never had a tattoo in my entire life that's so intense. Um, yeah. And I'm not gonna, honestly, I didn't really expect this, but it's not unsurprising to me, you know. With me, I was like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Even if I literally went into a fucking coma or something where I had to go to the hospital, no pain, no gain. That's the name of the game for Moino you know, Ravenberg, so it's not an issue. Now, anyways, now here it comes. <clears throat> and then while I was like, I was in the process of waking up because I slept a lot. Like I, for example, woke up and then I went back to sleep after an hour and then I woke up again after five hours and then I started the day. Like when it was already noon for me essentially and I'm used to waking up early in the morning, like 7 a.m., 8 a.m. I'm already awake provided that I go to sleep, provided that I go to sleep on time. Now, um, when I woke up, that's the explanation for those dreams, okay? So the ancient Aztec temple thing was just renewal, end of story, as in clairvoyance 2.0 for me, Moina Ravenberg, 10.0, 20.0, whatever you want to use, whatever idiom you want to use. Now, while I was in like half, in, a, in a, a, a dream state, while I was like half awake and half asleep, or I was still like sluggish or groggy, I was waking up, I saw the serpent, that same serpent, it started gaining color, it became, it turned into a completely green serpent, a really venomous pit viper, like with red eyes or purple or violet eyes. And it started climbing up some temple. And as, hour, as the hours went by, it reached the top. And then it was like something was trying to telepathically crush the serpent. But the serpent in its turn telepathically just destroyed the, those boulders. Like it's like imagine if you want to take like tiles and you just want to go like this. You know, like the serpent is in the middle and it just, those huge tiles that temples are made up of, like Native American ancient temples, or like, they tried squashing the serpent and the serpent immediately just destroyed everything, you know, and uh, that just kept playing over and over in a loop essentially throughout the day. Even if I was awake, I saw that like in my mind's eye in the background. Um, and, um, and yeah, it... <coughs> I was told, I already had a feeling what it was. I was like, yeah, okay. So the serpent represents Barbatos' power and that power is essentially making its way to the core of my astral body. And those, um, that whole playing in a loop fashion where it essentially withstands the, the pressure of, of those tiles, those huge boulder-like tiles and, and it crushes them 
with its telepathic ability stands for the pressure of my astral body and Barbatos' energy is withstanding it. After a while, that loop ended. Those tiles, or you could compare them like the same stones that the pyramids were made out of. They were that big and that like intense. And initially, I was briefly afraid that the serpent was going to get crushed, but the serpent was simply like, oh, and it just completely broke with broke those boulders, like it, almost like it did it telekinetically. Or, or yeah, like telekinetically, so telekinesis, almost. Just using its general astral power. Now, the serpent stopped hovering in front of me and it coiled itself around my spine. My spine simply represented the core of my astral power. And it, still, it started fusing with it. So it bit down on it like a, a, a snake biting a stick, like this, nyang. And then it simply stayed like this and it slowly become, became one with that glowing stick. That glowing stick is simply the core of my astral power. So my Kundalini, you name it, literally my spine, but spiritually, the, the absolute depth of my being. And it started fusing with it. And while that was going on, ever since I woke up, oh boy, the entire left part of my body was like paralyzed. It was almost like I had a fucking stroke. I'm not joking. Uh, I've recovered from that for like 70 to 80 percent, but this part of my shoulder still hurts like a motherfucker. It's like literally someone took a fucking sword that's like what a meter long and plunged it completely into my shoulder blade going all the way to my rib cage. My entire upper body, my left arm, my shoulder blade specifically and the part of my head, this part, it was completely paralyzed. I couldn't even lie down. Even lying down was painful. It was the first time in my life that I fell asleep essentially in the morning time when I went back to sleep after waking up the first time briefly where I essentially fell asleep on my back because I do not I always sleep on my side so in fetal position like on my right side but I literally can barely even lie down the second I lie down I'm like ow 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 and then I'm like ow 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 when I wake up it hurts so much oh boy I was like look at this bullshit and I heard that this is only temporary I was like, yeah, no, it's not an issue, no pain, no gain, but oh boy, first like, almost it's like I almost have some spiritual form of malaria or dengue, and now this, I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, no problem, no problem, I'm not complaining, I'm simply observing, I'm like, oh boy, yeah, um, and it's now gone, I can like move, but it still hurts for like 20%, so yeah, it's going to disappear in the coming days, obviously, obvious to me. Um, anyways, and the, ser the serpent started dissolving. It became one with my, uh, with my, my astral body as a whole completely. And I saw essentially my, 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 my spine, it turned into like one huge shooting beam that shot up in the air. And the beam changed color. It was just, it was blue before, just regular blue. Um, just the general color of astral energy or spiritual energy. And now it's violet and it's a lot bigger. Um, so yeah, um, and I, I heard transformation complete, etc., etc. Now I just need to get used to the power. So the pain in my shoulder blade will disappear when I'm used to the new, my new power. And yeah, that's what I essentially look like now. Anybody that takes a look at me spiritually, any sorcerer will, if they're strong enough, they'll be able to see it. If not, then you're out of luck. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, again, it's like when you see, like in those sci-fi movies where a laser beam shoots up into the sky and it transmits some signal to some extraterrestrial. That's what my astral body is like now. The sheer power is just, oh, I mean, delicious. I'm not complaining, obviously. But oh boy, I mean, the stuff I had to go through, I'm like, holy crap, Barbatus' power has one hell of a kick to it. So all of my clairvoyant energies, all of my clairvoyant energies have improved, like, I barely need to do anything. So it's improved to, to such devastating levels by my standards. So everything in my standards, I'm in my own class, no one can even like, even if I'm... I can't like possibly find someone that I can compare it to because there is no one. Even if I say so myself, obviously, yeah, there is no one. I just, oh, 
I just feel, oh no, I just feel, I feel amazing, but at the same time, oh boy, it came at one hell of a cost. I mean, like I said, in my entire life, in my entire career as a sorcerer, I don't think I've ever met something that was as strenuous. I'm not going to say intimidating or painful. It wasn't. But as laborsome, a transformation that was as emotionally laborsome or spiritually laborsome as this thing. I thought it was just going to be the tattoo like all the other stuff. Like all my other tattoos. And okay, I'll notice a change and that's it. Boom, done. You know, case closed. And this is all there is to it. Nope, oh, nope, 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 nope. I notice also with the mind delving, when I mind delve, it's no longer like mind delving 2.0 the way I described in the beginning. But you know, I noticed that I was like, huh? I was like, really? Interesting. I can, I noticed that um, when I mind delve now, see the tattoo is still itching, I'm itching the tattoo right now. When I mind delve, ah, bitchy um, tattoo. Yeah, when I mind delve, as in I read someone spiritually, I see what they're doing, what they're up to. I notice that I'm being shown what will happen in advance. So I, I surpass that almost hypothetically speaking impossible barrier, so to speak. So I can literally see what's happening, what's going to happen like an hour from a, uh, an hour ahead. And usually when that happens, uh, the reason is, well, not usually, generally speaking, the general consensus is that, um, is that for the past, for example, let's just say I viewed something or someone at, at, at 2 p.m. I mean, the time was 2 p.m. and in the vision, I see that it's 4 p.m. When I ask the time while I'm in vision mode, I'm like, what's the time? 4 p.m. approximately. I'm like, okay. I'm seeing two hours ahead because nothing happened. Nothing mentioned worthy happened between um, between now, 2 p.m. and then. So I'm literally seeing ahead, essentially, what will happen ahead. And obviously, it's sick because it's, it's essentially like time traveling. So I can essentially travel back and forth in anything, in any situation, past, present, future. <laughs> of course, I'm assuming I haven't tested it out, but I'm assuming that there are limits to how far I can go. But you can gen I can generally speaking, Barbatos tells me that generally speaking, I can go as far as you are skilled. So in my terms, it's a whole lot. I can jump like up to a thousand, he says, two thousand years into the future if I want more even. But that's up to me. I need to experiment with it, see what's acceptable and whatnot, etc. Because there are a lot of general conditions that you need to take into consideration. But essentially, I can comfortably just hop 500 years into the future and see what's up. What, for example, a country will look like, what changes will have taken place. Or I can go back into the past and see what happened there uh, or the present. I, I mean, everything. Like I said, I at a very basic primitive level could already do this, but only at a basic level. And now it's just, I can astrally time travel, literally. And I can just, it's so easy for me to just, to just hop in and out and whatnot. And I notice also that thanks to him, thanks to his power, I can also like, for example, create spiritual duplicates of myself. The, the way you, for example, see they've done doing superhero movies, like, <laughs> I can create like a legion of myself <laughs> and it's a lot easier to literally like I can for example uh, astral project or create a thingy for I, I can create an astral version of myself and I can actually see myself move in real time for example but I'm seeing ahead of time so I'm seeing me make a movement before I actually make that movement and it's so hilarious because it's almost like that movement prompts me to move but it doesn't, it just naturally happens. <laughs> and I find it so hilarious. And I see the spirits that I work with, etc. I see them around me, etc. I can just move around. The gravitational pull to my physical body is not heavy at all. I can easily withstand it. The only time it, it, it acts a bit annoying and it tries to pull me is when I'm like, I only just woke up and I'm still getting my bearings. You know, I'm not, I'm not mentally fully there yet. And it just goes on and on and on. For the rest, I can do whatever I want, more or less. This is quite sick, okay? And again, this is, before I end this video, uh, I'll, I'll write down any, uh, obviously I'll do another video if there are any other mentioned worthy follow-ups, but um, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching, so to speak. Uh, <clears throat> um,
Barbatos is playing, okay, the, the, the dimension he resides in, is made up of pure water, unsurprisingly, he's a lunar spirit, um, but it's purely hidden, and he always like retreats back into the shadows, and you only see a silhouette, like an outline of him, like a hunter with a nice fedora hat, etc., but you can't make out like facial features and stuff until he comes close by. And uh, the moon is always in the background and it's dark or sometimes violet or sometimes blue or sometimes regular color of the moon and it's always full moon but not that that matters all too much but yeah full moon is the general consensus and he just sits on like a raft in the middle of like a seemingly never-ending ocean. Again uh, lunar spirits generally speaking like burial and um, and other spirits like Lord Gabriel the Archangel Gabriel. The sphere looks like that. It's simply a subdivision of the moon, but Barbatos' one is unique and and um, it just and it's just it's just quite it's very cool, very cool, very sick. Um, and let me see what else did I have to say regarding Barbatos? Yeah. I was going to say, listen, it's, uh, I want to briefly remind people, the spirits mentioned in the Goetia, a lot of them have stuff like he can tell the past, present, and all things to come, and blah, 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 blah. Um, most of the spirits that have that description are either lunar or Venusian, if I'm not mistaken, but a lot of them, a substantial amount of them, or a noticeable amount, are lunar. Okay, like Paimon, for example. I can't remember if Paimon had that description, but in any case, you get the gist of it. A lot of lunar spirits taken from the Lesser Key of Solomon Book 1, the Kowaitja, are uh, that, ha that are lunar have that description, regardless of their background, whether they're fallen angels or pagan spirits, you name it, you know. Mm -hmm. they, um, <coughs> they have that description and this is what's meant with that description. They, they, they can't like tell you hey, all things past, present. It's meant in a metaphorical manner. If you work with them and you devote yourself to them and uh, you bring out the full arsenal, the full potency of their power in a matter of speaking, then you'll see that, yeah, your clairvoyance will heighten to such a point where you can essentially see what can what's going to happen in the past with a high degree of accuracy or total accuracy, best case scenario, worst case scenario, partial accuracy. Obviously, it requires practice in order to own your skill and perfect everything. Um, the same thing goes for the present or as well as for the future. Um, so yeah, that's what's meant and I am seeing that now. Not that I wasn't aware of it, but of course not in such a context because Barbatos' energy literally fused with me fully to the core and that's why it was so strenuous and so inconvenient and it was, it was kind of a pain in the ass, honestly. It was a substantial pain in the ass. Because it's the first time in my entire life that I'm experiencing that I had to experience something like this, something so so spiritually intense, as in intense at a, a clairvoyant level, you know. It was little like a again. It's like it's like um, it's like a, a, a huge river, okay, and that river was my energy. And then something is put in that river and the entire river goes from blue to violet. The, 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 the thing that was put in it literally had to fuse with the entire river. And the entire river for hundreds of kilometers or thousands stretching across continents turns or the entire world, so to speak, is um, different in color. It's something that you'll notice right away, obviously. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, I, when you take a step back and you look at everything from a neutral perspective or objectively, then yeah, no, nah, it's one hell of a, it's one hell of a, it has one hell of a kick to it. <laughs> oh boy, it's like being kicked in the balls, honestly. But I don't mind, like I said, no pain, no gain as always. But uh, I, despite the fact that it was like a kick in the balls, I still enjoyed it somehow. Okay, despite the fact that it was quite painful. And like I said, all of this is by my standards, so you can imagine... If it's quite painful for me and it was like that for me, any person watching this, it would kill you most likely. It, I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. You would either end up in a coma for the rest of your life or it would fucking, it would just outright kill you. Honestly. 
Okay, it just, you can't, you can't possibly comprehend. Okay, so I have no one that I can like compare it to, I can measure this to, no, no one. So yeah, um, so my entire clairvoyant power is now Barbatos flavored, if you will, <laughs> to the fullest of extents. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, just amazing. And that's what I'm seeing now. I'm like, see, this is what's meant at its finest. You can see it all things past, present, and to come. Because now I can do so. And I can do so with the highest degree of accuracy you can imagine as the best in the world. <laughs> Now I'm going like this even more. <laughs> Delicious. Oh God. This, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Oh boy, best decision. One of the best decisions ever. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys until next time. Bye.